From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. A tight-knit community in South Jersey is grieving the loss of a student. The Washington Township School District is still in shock tonight over the sudden loss. And first responders spent the day on the Delaware River searching for a little girl who fell into a rain-swollen creek in Chester Saturday night. Good Monday evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Siafa Lewis. Today was day three of the search. Lanasia Brooker was playing near the creek on Saturday when she fell in and was carried away. Crews will be back out tomorrow bringing with them new tools including scent dogs. CBS Philadelphia reporter Dan Snyder has more. I'm going to exhaust every option I have in order to um, find her and bring her back to her family. Chester Fire Commissioner John Paul Shirley ready to resume the search for six-year-old Lanasia Brooker more than a day and a half after she was reportedly swept into the Chester Creek. Search teams were working with new equipment on Monday, sonar technology from state police that will allow them to get into the creek. The boats that we had that were equipped with sonar were much too big to get up into Chester Creek. Shirley says the state police sonar can be towed behind smaller boats, granting them access to the creek. This now gives us the ability to, to almost see underwater. Officials say they plan to scan the entire creek from the mouth of the Delaware to the park where Brooker reportedly fell in. We saw them heading up and down the creek near the Second Street Bridge. Looking on was Stephen Ross, who lives in nearby Chichester, but says he came out Saturday to help look for Lanasia. I was looking around for like five hours later. I would park at every bridge, go down, walk the embankments, come back down. I got two kids myself. I got a seven year old and a three year old. I couldn't imagine it happening to them. We saw crews wrap up today's search around 12 30 this afternoon. Officials say they have since reviewed all the scans and didn't find anything. They say they'll be back out searching tomorrow with canines. In Chester, Dan Snyder, CBS News, Philadelphia. Two people were shot near SEPTA's Arrett Transportation Center in Frankfurt this afternoon. One of those victims has died. Chopper 3 over the scene at Griscom and Arrett Streets. We're working to learn what exactly led to the shooting and whether police have made any arrests as their investigation continues. This is a live look at Atlantic City tonight. Coastal flood warnings are in effect for the New Jersey and Delaware beaches. Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly joins us with the details in the next weather forecast. BK. Siafa, good evening to you. Yeah, let's start you out with those coastal flood warnings where you see the dark shade of green. That's where the warning is. The advisories are up for places like Cumberland, Salem County, up uh, around the bay into Newcastle County as well. The uh, moderate flooding is going to be now I mean, peaking out around 9, 10 o'clock tonight, and then it's minor flooding. As we roll into the day tomorrow, the coastal flood warning up until 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. It's not a rain driven event. It's tidal essentially as these easterly winds are pushing in. And those easterly winds are going to bring us some cloud cover uh, for our day tomorrow ahead of a weather maker that will be here on Wednesday. Right now, outside, beautiful look, 48 degrees. The temperature here in Philadelphia it feels like 48 because the winds are not all that strong. They're light, but as I mentioned, they are out of the east at three miles per hour. They're going to be picking up uh, tomorrow. It's 46 right now for you guys down around Wilmington, down the shore, a bit cooler because of the influence of that relatively cool water. Water temperatures last I looked, I looked yesterday and at Ocean City, for example, uh, it was 47 uh, there in the water. 44 is the temperature, the air temperature in Millville. 44 for Dover, still 50 degrees for you guys around Reading. So for tonight, it's going to be another chilly one. Not quite as cold as it has been. We'll say 36 here in Philly, mostly clear. Down the shore, temperatures eh, probably mid and upper 30s, and then we'll go 34 for the Lehigh Valley. Tomorrow, your Tuesday is dry, but it's going to be cloudy. A totally different story than today. I mean, how nice was it today, right? With all the sunshine, the blue sky, the clean air. Uh, 52 degrees for Philly. Down the shore, we're going to keep it in the 40s. And for the Lehigh Valley, at 51. Our next chance of rain comes in on Wednesday. We're going to talk about that, plus potentially a bigger weather maker for you on Thursday. All that and more in just a bit. Back over to you. All right, Bill, thank you so much. You can keep an eye on the next weather forecast anytime. Just head over to cbsphiladelphia.com slash weather to see the seven-day forecast, live radar, and more. The roof of Goodwill's East Erie Avenue facility partially collapsed on Saturday. The Philadelphia Fire Department says a clogged pipe which burst combined with the day's heavy rainfall caused the roof to collapse. Luckily, no one was inside the building at the time. LNI says the building is still structurally sound. Part of the building is used for the organization's adult education program. It has now been moved to remote learning for now. Others can attend classes at Goodwill's West Philly location. 
Washington Township sophomore Sophia Bennett died in a car crash Friday night. CBS News Philadelphia's Ray Strickland shares the impact this loss is having on the entire school community, including one student who knew Bennett well. It hurts. Washington Township High School student Giovanna Petalina says indescribable sadness filled the halls in her South Jersey High School Monday morning. It comes on the heels of a deadly car crash that killed 16 year old sophomore student Sophia Bennett. It's upsetting. I was at a sweet 16 when I found out, and then everyone was just down for the rest of the party. Petalina says she's known Bennett since they were six years old. She was really good at all the sports she did. Um, well liked. Well liked a lot. Uh, she was really nice. No words can explain. It's really sad. She was so young and had a whole life ahead of herself and you know, you're here today, going tomorrow. A life full of promise cut short. According to the Deptford Police Department, Bennett was killed in a two car crash Friday night and happened around 8 o'clock near the intersection of Hurtville and Deptford Center Rose. The 17 year old driver of the car was seriously injured. A 27 year old driver in the second car was also hurt in the crash. Police are still investigating. Bennett, who was a beloved student, was also a member of the school's softball and swim teams. In a statement, the district superintendent and school principal say she will be deeply missed by students and the community. Washington Township Mayor Lori Burns also reacted to Bennett's death, saying, quote, the passing of such a young life is an unimaginable sorrow, and we extend our sincerest condolences and support during this difficult time. And I'm told counselors were here at the school today to help students cope with this unexpected tragedy. Therapy dogs were here as well. The district says it will continue to provide support for as long as possible. Reporting at Washington Township High School, Ray Strickland, CBS News, Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Prisons Commissioner is retiring. Blanche Carney made history when she became Philadelphia's first female prisons commissioner in 2016. Carney's retirement announcement follows a number of recent inmate escapes. Her last day will be on April 5th. A search is now underway for her replacement. Philadelphia Mayor Sherelle Parker said in part in a statement, Commissioner Carney led the system under times of great stress and duress. There will be no shortage of second guessing her performance. However, I have a great deal of respect for the job the commissioner has done. A wave of luxury car thefts has police on high alert. Investigators say just this month, thieves broke into a, at least three homes in neighborhoods throughout South Jersey and stole expensive cars. CBS News Philadelphia South Jersey reporter Brandon Goldner spoke to one of the victims who was home with his pregnant wife when thieves broke in. Home surveillance video captures the moments when Harrison Township police say a group of thieves broke into Dr. Scott Hollander's house early last Wednesday. He says his wife, who's nine months pregnant, heard the group rummage through their house and jolted him awake. And said, "Here, there's some, there are people in the house." You know, I was startled. I I, I told her call 911, and I tried to grab some something to defend myself. Police say the thieves grabbed Dr. Hollander's wallet and car keys, driving off with his 2021 Range Rover Sport. The Hollanders say the experience. Experience left them traumatized. She didn't go to sleep till about like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning the day after, just waiting for that time to pass in her mind and made her feel more comfortable. Harrison Township police say thieves are targeting luxury cars, not just in the township, but across the state, and they're warning homeowners to be vigilant. Washington Township and Mantua police both say similar burglaries occurred this month in their jurisdictions, in which thieves broke into homes to search for keys to luxury cars. No arrests have been made in those cases. Clive Wayne is part of a company that recovers stolen. In vehicles, and he says some of the smartest ways to protect your cars are low tech solutions. And ironically, go back to some of the physical measures that we saw from yesteryear, such as steering locks, crook locks, good CCTV. Meanwhile, Dr. Hollander's family has already taken steps to fortify their home. It's an adjustment, like you're not the same, you're just not the same, you're not at the same piece, and you're. Um, you're now thinking about things that you took for granted. Police say they found Dr. Hollander's car in Hillside, New Jersey, the same day it was stolen. And investigators say they've identified a potential suspect in the case, but no arrests have been made. Brandon Goldner, CBS News, Philadelphia.